U.S. Open champion in 78, won the Westchester in 77. Those have been his two victories in the tour so far. He's been around since 73. Trying to go four under to put him one off the lead. Over Hill and Dale and very bold. Almost three feet coming back for his par, but all eyes on Jack Nicholas now. This is the way 15 has played, slightly under par. But this is far and away the most difficult pin placement. This hole, like Ken Ventura, has been a bit controversial. I know Nicholas has changed it at least once. Well, it looks like that sometimes you can hit the ball close to the hole where you saw Andy North and Jack Nicholas land. They weren't more than a few feet apart. Now Nicholas is, as you said, about 12 feet, and Andy North was some 35 feet away. This will be pretty much of a straight putt on the basis of others we've seen putt from this area. Had Jack's ball landed two feet further back, he would have rolled down and been at least 30 feet away. Even par for the day, three under for the tournament. And if he makes his putt, he goes within one shot of the lead. He hasn't won this year, keep in mind. Let's go to 16. And Peter Oosterhaus. This is now for bogey yeah, five. Catch Bobby Holdwell, and a five it is. And Oosterhaus drops back to four under. Back to 15. Percher now. This will be for par from about five feet to keep Tom Perger two shots off the lead at three under par. Oosterhaus and Hayes at five under tied. Perzer, a couple of shots back. Leonard Thompson, keep in mind, is still at four under. He's still uh, one shot off the lead and he's back on the tee. Didn't look very confident as he hit it. And a bogey for Pertzer drops him back to two under par. Andy North for his three. To stay at three under. We've got 18 of the top 20 money winners on the tour in this field, one of the best of the year. Shots off the face at minus three. Last group of the day approaching the tee at 15. Leonard Thompson, Mark Hayes, and Tom Kite. Thompson, the man who set the course record, lowered it by two marks with a 62 Friday. Here's Hayes, who started out the day, according to reports, literally just about knocking down the flag sticks. He hit three in the front nine had the lead at one point and now has fallen back into a tie seven iron Hayes even par today and five under for the tournament tied with Oosterhaus for the lead oh, so that from left to right and look out gallery in the thick grass about eight feet or so off the edge of the putting surface. Been a long time between victories for Mark Hayes, 1977 Tournament Players Championship. Last time he's won one. Here's Thompson. 
up and down around yesterday. He has a seven iron. He's three over today. Very slow, deliberate swing. Gaps and bogeyed this hole yesterday. That's not a bad shot. Uh, rolled into the rough, wouldn't stay. Rolled down the hill. And he winds up 15, 17 feet away. Hayes at five under. Oosterhaus now at four under. And Thomas Kite coming back with a vengeance after a three-week vacation from the tour, refreshed. This young man in his last 10 outings has finished in the top 10 nine times. Seven iron. That's looking good. Nicely done. Kite. Eight feet away from a birdie. He's at two under par for the tournament. Three shots behind the leader, Mark Hayes. Mark Hayes, who has not won since the Tournament Players Championship back in 1977, holding a one-stroke advantage over Peter Oosterhaus for the moment. Bruce Litsky, Andy North, and Jack Nicklaus all joined in at three under par, two off the pace, and a lot of exciting golf let to go on the holes that we're covering. Let's go and take a look at 15. Test coming up here for Mark Hayes. Out of that thick grass. Got about 20 feet of green to work with. This is his second shot to the par three. That's happened to more than a few players. Watch this. He's almost back in the thick grass again because of that severe slope. So he lies too to this par three and is still 20 feet away. That's tough, Ken. Well, you've got that slope in front of you, and once you get over that slope, only having 10 or 12 feet to play with, it starts back down the hill, and coming out of the rough, you don't want it to fly. So he's not faced with an easy shot yet, and four is still going to be a good score from where he is now. Hayes has got to be thinking maybe a little bit, or has been thinking about 18 yesterday, where he double bogeyed, or he would obviously be in much better position. Leonard Thompson over in that same area. He used only one golf ball Friday when he shot 62. Somebody said he should have saved that one for the rest of the weekend. Shot 73 yesterday. He was eight under in this tournament at one point. You know, Frank, with Oosterhaus making bogey at 16 and then Mark Hayes, uh, Looks like he's going to make bogey here. That lets in about eight people now with a chance to win. Thompson will be short. Needs that for his par. Or that putt that Nicholas missed a few moments ago came within an inch. That could have conceivably uh, tied him for the lead. The way things have turned out here. Hayes. This is his third shot to the par three, putting from right on the edge. And a little bit of indecision to 17. Crucial shot for Peter Oosterhaus after that bogey of the 16th. He must hit the green here, which is no easy target. The pin set far right. He's got 165 yards to the hole, bringing it in left to right. If it stops, no, it won't. And that is deep grass behind the hole. Back to the 15th. Ken, uh, Hayes has put the putter back in the bag. He's going to chip it. Yes, he's going to try to go up that slope. There might have been a little tough to grass there, but he's got the grass behind him. If he puts it with a low stroke, he'll get caught. He has picked the club, club up just a little bit. Good shot. Great shot. Well, he'll still wind up with a bogey, which will drop him back into a tie for the lead with uh, Oosterhaus. But a fine shot, as you said, to 16. <laughs> Tom.
Tom Kite Thank you. here on 50. Now with a birdie try from nine feet above the cup. This would put him at three under. Just one shot off the lead. Everybody is in that area. We could have one of the biggest playoffs ever here, numerically, depending on what happens in the final three holes. Kite started the day minus four, so he's given a couple back today. But he can pick up a very big stroke here. He's now made the cut in 27 straight tournaments. Let's go to 16. Where Jack Nicholas has hit a huge drive, playing with Andy North and Tom Percher, both of whom have hit North in the front rough, and Percher hit the green on the fly, trickled off into the short grass. Nicholas has parted every day. He's had rounds of 70, 70, 70. And he's on that track again today. Tom Kite made his par at 15. Reviews on the way. Super shot. Front edge. We'll be back with more golf action from the Glen Abbey Golf Club after this word from your local station. This is absolutely the strength of Peter Oosterhaus's game. This uh, around the greens, he's an absolute wizard. But he has got a tall order. Is coming down the slope with a right to left break for his third shot of the 17th. He won't know yet, of course, that Hayes has bogeyed 15. Well, having uh, called it wrong, I'll go to 16. Don Chevrolet with you at 16, where Andy North has from the rough on top of that bunker. You see around a pass by a considerable distance. But Jack Nicholas, as you saw a moment or two ago, has got about 15 feet coming up for a key birdie attempt for him as he trails the present time. But his two shots, and this is the one tournament he has never won on this golf course that he designed. Glen Abbey in Oakville, Ontario, just west of Toronto. Tom Pritzker, as the wind, although it has died down now, has been blowing from the golfers right to left as carried uh, some approach shots past the green. He's just on the fringe there, analyzing it. It'll be uh, slightly downhill for him and a tricky spot from which to putt for Pritzker. Currently at two under par. Now let's go to 17. Well, Boosterhouse must make this putt. A little right to left break down the slope for par to remain at four under. That was a very big putt for the big fella. More championships are lost than won. We'll go back to the 16th. And now let's see if Jack Nicholas can join Easter House at four under par as he goes for this 15 foot birdie. Hanging on the lip on 15, just missing this one here on 16. And those misses become very expensive now with North and Litsky and Nicholas just a shot back of Hayes at Oosterhouse. Now Tom Kite, the group behind, hitting from the tee. He made a move yesterday, but has not sustained that today. Many of that Tom Kite might emerge here with his title. 
but there are about eight people who conceivably can.